Hello everybody, welcome back. I hate to do this to you, but I have to do another layer. As you can see, or will be able to see in a second. You see over here, and let's see where else. This here, um, my dots over in the corner there, I made a mistake and realized what I've done wrong. And as you guys know, this is all trial and error. So what I did wrong was I used heat on it and it liquefied that resin that I put underneath of the clear resin and made it float out more. So I'm not happy with it yet. So I'm going to continue on. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to use... This is all cured now. I'm going to use some PBO paints straight out of the bottle onto this geode. We're really going to funkify it. It's going to be crazy looking. And I'm going to let that paint dry. And then I'm going to dump a bunch of clear resin in here. And then it's done no matter what. I am going to film the PBO right now. I'm going to show you how I do that. But after that, I'm not going to make another video of me just filling it up with clear resin. So after this video, I will show you the finished result. Before I do that, I have to tell you guys, this may be the last time you hear from me. I am in so much trouble when my old man gets home. I spent so much money at Michael's today. But let me tell you something. I have some really fun, cool projects coming up. So I hope you keep tuning in. Um, I'm going to do some things that I haven't seen anybody do before. Um, I found... Let me just show you a couple of these things, guys. They're so cute. So I found these at Michael's. They were two bucks a piece. See? Two dollars. They're supposed to be Christmas ornaments for the tree. I'm going to make myself some custom ornaments out of these. Of course, all of this I'm going to film. I also found these cute little black coasters that I'm going to do. I've been practicing my 3D resin skills on the side. And I'm going to attempt to use this little dollar wooden box to paint a fish or some type of a, uh, either an animal or probably a fish and make a 3D fish out of it. Then I'll also be doing this one dollar photo frame that I found. I'll be resining that showing you guys how to make a really unique looking photo frame and they're only a dollar also i found these i found these at the at michael's in that diy table scrapping area the same place i got those little tin round signs from they are Some kind of a tray, chalkboard tray. There's, It's a two-pack. They were $15, but I used a coupon, so they were $7. So I figured I could do a nice little design in those for you. And I also am going to try to do an acrylic pour using a soy sauce bottle. I figured it's got a funky shape, so if I put it upside down, if the paint comes down and drips off of this, maybe they'll make some cool designs. I don't know. Or try it this way. We'll see. But yeah, I'm like in so much trouble. Not to mention I spent like $50 on canvases, and then I went to Lowe's. Oh, it was a long day. So anyway, I have a request from a subscriber. And you guys know me, I like to satisfy. I am going to do this little PBO section here 
and then I am going to show how I make my silicone molds. Now, a lot of you know about that, so you don't feel like you have to watch it, but there are some people that do not know how to do that. So, as I said, I aim to please. So, I have here my PBO paints. If you don't know what they are, they come in different types. They have, um, they're solvent based paints and they have special effects. Now I have, let's see, one, two, three, I have four different types of PBO paints. I have vitrail, vitrail which is used mainly for stained glass. You can use it in other art applications, but mostly uh, people use this type of PBO for stained glass work. Then there is ceramic, which speaks for itself. I guess you use it on ceramic art. And then the two that artists use mainly in artwork are the moon and the prisme types. The moon paints create a crater look in the surface of the paint. The prisme creates like a honeycomb effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use both the moon and the prisme together to see if I could get any cool effects. And then I have a vitrail that is actually a gold and I'm going to use that also. Even though this is not stained glass, it will still work. And I just want to see if I could get some cool effects. Now, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to do some, like I'm going to cover up my circles here with some new circles. And probably up here too. And then maybe cover up these areas also. The thing with these, they stink. So be prepared for that. And they need to be mixed really well. I mixed both, I mixed all my paints for about a couple of minutes each, but since I've been talking, they have separated a little bit. So you really gotta keep them mixed up good. Now, believe it or not, these, well, two of them, you'll believe are gold. This lighter one here is called Antique Gold. And I mentioned that because I told you I want this to be all gold. So I don't want you to see me putting this in thinking I'm putting in a tan color. Because technically it's listed as gold. What I'm going to do is I have these little plastic pipettes. And I'm going to nip the tip off so that they're a little bit wider. And... I'm going to use those to put the paint onto the geode and to see what kind of reactions I can get. I'm going to do one and then if I don't like it, I'm going to wipe it off and go back to the drawing board. But I really hope that this is it for this one. I wanted it to be done, but it didn't happen. What can you do? It's all a trial and error kind of thing. So I'm going to nip this about an inch up. And you can see now the hole is a lot bigger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the darkest one down first. And that's the vitrail. So I'm just going to suck some up. And I'm going to carefully come over here and just push it out into a round circle. Then I'm going to go on to the next color and do the same. For that, I'm going to do the lightest the antique gold. It's 
right in the center of it. I'm just going to let that spread out a little bit. Okay, and then the last one is called Buttercup, which is a really bright color. Now you can already tell that my board is not level because it's going that way. So let me just raise this up here with something, anything, Tammy. My table is really off. I'll tell you what, let me use a couple of these tiles I just got. I'm going to be uh, ripping my desk apart and making something for the center of the floor. My house goes down on an angle a little bit, so I think that's what's going on. Like right here it's level, but then right there it's not. All right, so last one, buttercup. Buttercup. And I lost my pipette. It's probably right in front of my face, but I'm not going to take the time to look for it. Oh, make sure you guys check out the end of this video. Even if you don't watch the making of the mold, you're going to see Clyde's sister at the end of this one. Okay, here we go. Right in the center, nice and slow. And I think what I'll do is I'll rotate them a little bit, the colors anyway. You know, I'm doing them in such small areas. I wonder if you'll even see any of the effects. may not I would however like for you to see the effects so let me get something to pour them onto I have a cheap little dollar store canvas here. They sell them now at the Dollar Tree, so I get a bunch of them to test things on. Or see if colors go good together. All right, so I'm going to take... Oh, Mia, what are you doing in here? i got a kitty in here. I'm going to take, let's see, this antique gold because I have a lot of it. This is the Prisme. So I'm going to just put some on and let it sit there so you guys could see what they do. I'll bring it back to you in a little bit. I thought I was using a moon. 
Now, I don't even have a moon out. What is wrong with me? I really hope these don't join. I have to be careful of that. I don't know if you could see the little lines around each color, but they're pretty cool. Now I found these, by the way, at Michael's, but they were on clearance and I noticed they don't have them anymore. So something like this you may have to buy online. Over here, this is a moon color. So I'm just going to spread some out there, let it sit, and then I'll bring it back and put a little bit more of this one too. Okay, so I'll put that to the side now. So I'm going to continue on here, just making my little dots. This one in the center, it's starting to do something. Just want to put one right here. And right here. Quiet kitty. I think it'll just help break up that fogginess a little bit, you know. I'm hoping it will anyway. If not, it's getting flung out the window. And then a couple more over here, and then I'm done with this. I want to get it to put to the side so I can get it nice and level and let it do its thing. I want to do one right here. Starting to go wonky on me. Okay. Uh, next is this one.
I'm going to put one right in the center there too. I'm going to straighten these out a little bit. There. I'm done. Let me move this to the side. Come on, Andy, move it. Okay. I have that put to the side. Let me show you this stuff here. So far what I have. That is the Prisme. You see that cool pattern? And this one is the Moon. See like the little cell looking things in there? So those are some of the effects. Almost looks like snake skin. Okay. So I'll leave that to the side. See what we get. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have that run into, or try to have it run into one another. Let's see if we get any more crazy, crazier effects, I should say. Once you move them, they tend to lose their uh, abilities. See how that line is forming right there? You see that line? And there's a way to have these all work together. I'm not a pro on these. I basically use them the way that you see me using them. But there's a lot of videos out there. Just type in PBO, P-E-B-E-O, paints. And uh, you should be able to find something. All right, so... Time for mold making time. If you don't want to see how to make the silicone mold, you can fast forward to the end and see Bonnie, Clyde's sister. She is quite the joker. Okay, so this is how I do it. These are poster frames. You buy them to protect your posters, or you people put puzzles in them and hang them on the wall. They come in all different sizes. They are, this was $6, I believe. Yeah, because it was $12. You know, Michael's is very overpriced. It's just cheap plastic, but it was $12 and they, they were half off. So it was six bucks, which is basically what you could get it for at Walmart for the 16 by 20. Now, normally what I would do before I even open this is I would use this plastic nice and flat and I would put my uh, silicone shape on here for my geode right on top of this plastic. Um, the back will come out nice and smooth. It'll The resin will peel right off of this plastic. But since this is a tutorial and I want to show how I actually make it on the piece of plastic that's on the inside, I'm gonna open it. But you can, right now, not even opening it, this plastic, use your silicone, make your shape, pour your resin, do all that, and have fun with it. But for learning purposes, I'm going to open mine. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, so inside here is a piece of acetate. That's what is protecting your poster when it's in the frame. If you go on Amazon and type in a, in the search bar acetate sheets, they're very expensive. This is a cheap alternative. So what you wanna do is, now you can take the frame apart and take out just the piece of plastic. That's what I was working on there. But you can leave it right in the frame if you don't want to use the frame for anything. I'm going to, I think, take the frame off because this 
is distracting the blue. So now, on top of the piece of acetate is another thin piece of plastic that you can pour on. I've done it. So you can actually get three uses out of this one frame. Before you open it, make a geode, peel that one off, throw that plastic away, do another one on top of that sheet of plastic, throw it away, and now you're down to the bare piece of acetate. So three uses out of one, one uh, poster frame. So now, just because my desk is disgusting with resin everywhere, I'm just going to leave that there. This is it. Okay? And like I said, they sell smaller ones. They sell bigger ones, much bigger ones. Next thing you're going to need is caulk. Caulk is the stuff that they put around the tiles in the bathroom. Hold on, guys. Let me let Mr. Indiana out. Go. Come on. Mia, yeah, you go. That's the stuff they use, the white stuff that's in between tiles or around your tub. That is what I use to make my silicone molds, my uh, geode molds. It needs to be 100%. I have mine in my gun. I'll just get a new one to show you up close. Needs to be 100% silicone. It doesn't matter if it's clear or white. Both will work. I have used ones that weren't waterproof. They work fine, but I've been getting the 100% waterproof. As long as it's 100% silicone, it will work. Now... Let me let you in on a little secret. When you open this, you have to cut the tip off. Put it into a, one of those uh, caulk guns. And you need to take something that's very long and sharp, like a skewer. Stick it down in a hole because there's a little piece of foil down here. One day, I did not. the first time I tried this, I did not know that. And I'm pushing and I'm pushing and I'm saying, God, I'm never going to be able to do this. It's too hard. And then it exploded because I pushed and pushed so hard that it just blew the whole piece of foil out inside. Some of these guns, these uh, caulk guns, some of them have a little long metal pin looking thing. That you actually pull down and they use it to stick down into this to open it. Mine does not have one. So I'll cut the tip off and put a skewer down there and poke a hole in it. So when you do this, you have to do what I'm about to do at least three times, maybe four. So you want to draw out your shape, okay? And then you want to caulk your first shape. I'm sorry, your first layer. Then you're going to have to let that firm up a little tiny bit. Because if you do the second layer on top of it, it's going to start folding over on itself. And I'll show you that. I will actually go through with this. Um, the reason why you have to do the shape and then go around it again and again and again is to build up height. You need to have at least, I would say, a quarter of an inch to a half inch high so that the resin doesn't pour out. Another thing, once you do it the first time around, you have to look down around the shape that you just put down on the acetate and make sure there are no gaps between the silicone and the acetate or else the resin will leak out. Now I find that I check mine very thoroughly and I still get some leaks, but it's not a big deal. It's just a little extra cleanup for you guys, but it's pretty 
easy to take care of. So I'm going to get a marker and I'm going to draw out the shape that I want. Now you can do hearts, you could do stars, you could do butterflies. I did a butterfly one. There's a video. You could check it out. Um, I did a butterfly wing. You can draw any shape you want with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you. I'm going to come up with my shape and then actually, you know what? I don't have to pause you. I'm just going to do going to wing it. Now, wherever you put this marker, make sure that silicone goes on top of it because if the resin touches where this marker is, it's going to transfer into your resin. So wherever I draw, I need to make sure that I'm going to be putting silicone there. And if I make a mistake in my drawing, then I need to come in a little closer. I'll, I'll show you. So this will be my center. Okay. And then let's say I wanted to go like this. And I said, oh, I don't like that. Okay. If I try to draw on the outside here, like so, and I now use the silicone on the outside, the resin is going to touch this purple line here, and it's going to transfer onto the back of your piece. So that's why I say just be very careful, maybe lightly with a, well, you couldn't do it with pencil. Just make sure that you start further out this way. If you make a mistake, you can work, you have more room to work. So now this line that I was doing. Okay. Okay. So now I don't like that shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to come right here. And now that's going to be my shape. I have to foul. I cannot have silicone in this area. Okay. I have to foul this inner line. In the center, you got to pretty much leave it alone because no matter which way you change this around now, or actually that's not true because this is going to be the open area. So I can change this a little bit if I want to, which I want to because I'm actually not liking that. Okay, so now this is all going to be open. We don't need silicone there. We need it on that outer line. So let's get started. You should always maybe test it on the side somewhere just to get the feel of it. I've done this plenty of times, so I know how hard to push. But you want to just start pushing and drawing your shape. It's okay if it's not perfect. Just 
So make sure not too much of that uh, purple is exposed on the inner side of this silicone barrier. For me, this is very hard to do because of my hands and I'm very shaky. So I'm kind of way off of my line, but it's okay because the line is on the outside, so it's not going to affect the outcome. Or I should say the back of my geode. Okay, so now I have it down. I'm going to look to the side and make sure that it's touching everywhere on there. If it's not, you're going to push it down a little bit. So now we're going to go, normally I would let this sit for about 10 minutes to let it firm up a little bit, but I'm going to show you what could possibly happen if you don't wait. Of course, it won't happen because I want to show you. Just take your time, nice and slow. Oh, there it goes. See, it's falling on the inside right there. That may be our operator error though, that one. So what you want to do is continue this around at least three times. And now I'm really falling off. This will peel right off the acetate, so don't worry about messing it up. Let me start over here. I have a video also way back where I tried this with Vaseline and it worked. Um, the only thing with the Vaseline is, is you got to clean it off the resin after. And it does clean right off, but it's just a little messy. Okay. When, if you take a break in between, put the cap on this thing because it'll continue to come out. But I have a little bit of a mess to pick up here now. Um, like right here, it's ready to fall off. So I'll just lightly push it into place. Over here also, it's coming over a little bit. Okay, and then here it's falling over a little bit. So I'm going to let that sit for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm going to work on the middle. And you know, I'm not very happy with something here. Let me do this middle first. Whoop. The image you draw will mostly be followed. You may get a little kink in the road like I did just there, but that's fine. So right here where you end the stream, 
it's not going to be touching so you have to make sure okay make sure you press it down a little bit so now yeah I'm just gonna leave it alone I'm sure it'll be fine something about this area I'm not liking the flow but it's kind of like flat almost Hmm. Alright, I'm going to leave it alone. So I'm going to go around here again. I like to just wipe the tip off so that it's nice and clean when I start. So now I did two layers of this and that's probably enough to make a geode that's only an eighth of an inch thick. So that's why you want to keep building and building so that you have at least a quarter inch thick or else the resin will end up The resin will end up uh, bending. Also, another thing, you see how I dripped it a little bit in here? If I leave that and let it dry, when I pour resin, it's going to reject. So, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let it dry, but then I'm going to peel it off before I do the resin. So, I'm going to come back out here and see if I could possibly do another layer without it caving in on me. nice and slow and try to aim for the dead center of the last row so that the weight is equal so if you put it right on the edge it's going to make it want to flop over Right here, it's starting to flop. Also, doing geodes like this, you're going to have ridges on the edge when you pull the resin out. So, you have to decide whether or not you're going to sand them or not. Sometimes they're very sharp. Now, I know people say that you could take your finger and smooth the inner edge of this out while it's wet. I have tried that multiple times and all I do is screw things up. Now see this fell over on me. I'm going to try to lift it back up and I have to remember now that I have silicone that I have to get off of this plastic before I pour. I'm not going to lie, this could be a very frustrating and pain in the butt thing to do. But if you want to do it, you do it. Also, I notice if you take this and pull it back a little bit and let it touch the plastic that's behind it, it helps make it stay up a little bit.
Okay, we got that. And then I'm going to do over here one more time, and then I'm going to leave it. I totally missed that. I'm going to go back and fill it in now. That was pretty bad. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my cap back on for now. And I'm going to go around and try to fix some of this. And also make sure that it's not, doesn't have gaps. Sorry about that. My camera cut off. I'm out of storage here, guys. So, you get the gist of it. Go around. Make sure it's touching everywhere. Anywhere that it did fall on the inner side where your resin is going to be. Make sure that you get it off of there one way or another. I am just pushing this part back in there. I'm going to take my finger and try to wipe it off the best that I can. But when it's time to do the actual geode, I'm going to go in there and pick off anything that's stuck to it. So go around, check it. I sincerely suggest, not sincerely, I suggest that you let do around go around do the first layer mm -hmm. let it dry or let it firm up a little bit at least before you go on to the next layer so that you don't run into these problems and this stuff dries really really quick as i said you can take your finger and try to smooth the edge on the inside if you want but it is very very messy and to me it just makes things a lot worse so let me give you a really quick close-up of that PBO. I'm afraid to even look at my geode right now. I'm afraid that it went all over, but maybe not. Isn't that cool? This one didn't do much. I like the Prisme ones better. That's Prisme. And let me show you the geode quick. Okay, so the lighting is bad over here, but it's okay. We're going to take it outside when it's time. So you can see the little honeycomb pattern that they're making. So what I'm going to do is let this dry up and um, put a clear coat of resin on it. And then I will come back and show you guys that. All right, so I want to wish you all a great night, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video if you want. Um, make sure you come back to see me again, okay guys? Have a great night and happy pouring. Let me introduce you to two more of my felines. Whoop! <laughs> That's Bonnie Bell. That's Clyde's sister. You can tell. Another fatty laying on her back. And that's little Jackson. And he cries every 15 minutes to be fed. Because he's spoiled. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. He's striking a pose. He loves you all already. Jackie? What do you want, Jackie? What? Okay, say goodnight.
Say good night. Say happy pouring. <laughs> Jackie, can you say happy pouring? Huh, Jackie? Jackie. No, I think he told me to bug off. I'll say it, guys. Happy pouring. <laughs>